This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. This reading is by Michael Sirwa, Michael.Sirwa, S I R O I S dot com. Penguin Island by Anatole France. Book Six Modern Times The Affair of the Eighty Thousand Trusses of Hay. The book begins with a quote. O Father Zeus, only save thou the sons of the Achaeans from the darkness, and make clear sky and vouchsafe sight to our eyes, and then, so it be but light, slay us, since such is thy good pleasure. The Iliad, 17645, and the following. Book Six, Chapter One, General Greatock, Duke of Skull. A short time after the flight of the Emeril, a middle-class Jew called Pyro, desirous of associating with the aristocracy and wishing to serve his country, entered the Penguin army. The minister of war, who at that time was Greatock, Duke of Skull, could not endure him. He blamed him for his zeal, his hooked nose, his vanity, his fondness for study, his thick lips, and his exemplary conduct. Every time the author of any misdeed was looked for, Greatock used to say, it must be Pyro. One morning, General Panther, the chief of staff, informed Greatock of a serious matter. Eighty thousand trusses of hay intended for the cavalry had disappeared, and not a trace of them was to be found. Greatock exclaimed at once, It must be Pyro who has stolen them. He remained in thought for some time, and said, the more I think of it, the more I am convinced that Pyrot has stolen those eighty thousand trusses of hay, and I know it by this. He stole them in order that he might sell them to our bitter enemies, the porpoises. What an infamous piece of treachery! There is no doubt about it, answered Panther. It only remains to prove it. The same day, as he passed by a cavalry barracks, Prince de Boseno heard the troopers as they were sweeping out the yard, singing, Boseno et gros gros chanchon, on en va faire des andouilles, des sociés et du chanchon, pour le rêve de bobo gré. It seemed to him, contrary to all discipline, that soldiers should sing this domestic and revolutionary refrain, which on days of riot had been uttered by the lips of jeering workmen. On this occasion he deplored the moral degeneration of the army, and thought with a bitter smile that his old comrade Greatock, the head of this degenerate army, basely exposed him to the malice of an unpatriotic government, and he promised himself that he would make an improvement before long. That scoundrel Greatock, said he to himself, will not long remain a minister. Prince de Boseno was the most irreconcilable of the opponents of modern democracy, free thought, and the government which the penguins had voluntarily given themselves. He had a vigorous and undisguised hatred for the Jews, and he worked in public and in private, night and day, for the restoration of the line of the Draconides. His ardent royalism was still further excited by the thought of his private affairs, which were in a bad way, and were hourly growing worse. He had no hope of seeing an end to his pecuniary embarrassments until the heir of Draco the Great entered the city of Alca. When he returned to his house, the prince took out of his safe a bundle of old letters, consisting of a private correspondence of the most secret nature, which he had obtained from a treacherous secretary. They proved that his old comrade Greatock, the Duke of Skull, had been guilty of jobbery regarding the military stores, and had received a present of no great value from a manufacturer called Mallory. The very smallness of this present deprived the minister who had accepted it of all excuse. The prince re-read the letters with a bitter satisfaction, put them carefully back into his safe, and dashed to the minister of war. He was a man of resolute character. On being told that the minister could see no one, he knocked down the ushers, swept aside the orderlies, trampled underfoot the civil and military clerks, burst through the doors, and entered the room of the astonished Greatock. I will not say much, said he to him, but I will speak to the point. You are a confounded cad. I have asked you to put a flea in the ear of General Moschine, the tool of those Republicans, and you would not do it. I have asked you to give a command to General de Clapier, who works for the Dracophils, and who has obliged me personally, and you would not do it. 
I have asked you to dismiss General Tandem, the commander of Port Alca, who robbed me of fifty louis at cards, and who had me handcuffed when I was brought before the high court as Emerald Chatillon's accomplice. You would not do it. I asked you for the hay and bran stores. You would not give them. I asked you to send me on a secret mission to Porposia. You refused. And not satisfied with these repeated refusals, you have designated me to your government colleagues as a dangerous person who ought to be watched. And it is owing to you that I have been shadowed by the police. You old traitor, I ask nothing more from you, and I have but one word to say to you. Clear out. You have bothered us too long. Besides, we will force the vile republic to replace you by one of your own party. You know that I am a man of my word. If in twenty-four hours you have not handed in your resignation, I will publish the Mallory dossier in the newspapers. But Greatalk calmly and serenely replied, Be quiet, you fool. I am just having a Jew transported. I am handing over Pyrot to justice as guilty of having stolen eighty thousand trusses of hay. Prince Boseno, whose anger vanished like a dream, smiled. I, is that, is that true? You will see. My congratulations, Great Hawk. But as one always needs to take precautions with you, I shall immediately publish the good news. People will read this evening about Pyro's arrest in every newspaper in Alca. And he went away muttering, That Pyro, I suspected he would come to a bad end. A moment later, General Panther appeared before Great Hawk. Sir, said he, I have just examined the business of the eighty thousand trusses of hay. There is no evidence against Pyro. Let it be found, answered Great Hawk. Justice requires it. Have Pyro arrested at once. End of Book Six, Chapter One.